All right, there's one more case study we want to look at in this section as far as we go here. Um, and so kinship theory is this idea, and we've, we've mentioned this before in a previous section of notes, but the idea is called inclusive fitness. So the idea being is that if you have a brother or a sister, parent, children, if you have a cousin, you share a lot of genetic material with them. If you've ever done Ancestry DNA or 23andMe, any of those sites, I'm not sure that I recommend them. I've done them, but there's some questionable things about them. But if you've ever done them, you can see how much of your DNA you share with these people. You share copies of the same alleles. So because of genetic similarity between individuals, it's often expected that we would see cooperative behavior, meaning we're going to work together, or altruistic behavior, meaning that I will sacrifice myself to save you if that's what's needed. And the survival of one's kin basically helps propagate one's own genes is the idea behind why this occurs. So we're going to look at a case study here with kinship that happens in naked mole rats. And so you probably know naked mole rats from the show Kim Possible with Rufus. But the naked mole rat, um, Heterocephalus glober, live in tropical Africa. That's where they're found naturally. And they were the first vertebrates that were discovered to exhibit the trait of eusociality, which is an extreme form of sociality that we only normally find in insects, certain insects groups. So this is the behavior that you would expect to see in ants and bees, those types of insects and termites, those insects that have a queen and they have worker animals and things like that. So what exactly is eusociality? I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it because it's true sociality. It's EU, I'm pretty sure is the Greek for true. Let me look that up real quick. I probably should have just started over, but yeah, it means good, apparently. So good sociality. Um, so there are three requirements for this use sociality. A reproductive division of labor, in which individuals of certain castes, and caste here refers to like echelons of society. So it's this idea that maybe, um, you know, only the, you know, like the rich people, the upper class, middle class, lower class, you know, so the nobles versus the common folks, that kind of idea. That's what, that's what that word means if you're not familiar with it. But in a certain caste, they reproduce, other individuals do not. So you have a queen or you have a king or a prince, something to that effect, and no, ever, nobody else reproduces. Summer two, overlap in generations such that individuals of different generations are alive at the same time. And number three, the communal care of the young. Um, so everybody takes care of the young, lots of generations of the same species, which gives a lot of chance for inbreeding, you know, so there, there's something to be thinking about with that. Um, they could go into this as well as we move along here. So, um, the naked mole rats, interesting fact, I did not know this about them myself, but they live the longest of all rodent species. Apparently, they can live as long as 30 years. And apparently, one of the things about a naked mole rat is a 30-year-old, old, geriatric naked mole rat is still as viable as, say, like a 10-year-old rat. So the idea being is like, it's almost like they hit, they, there's, there seems to be a lot of youthful longevity in these organisms. And so maybe the fountain of youth will be found in the naked mole rat. I'm sure there's lots of people that are trying to look into it for that. They live in a large group where there is a queen and between one to three males are the only individuals that mate and reproduce. They're the only individuals that reproduce. Nobody else reproduces in this colony. Within the colony, the aggression between the members is not absent. They will fight with each other, but for the most part, they will cooperate with each other. They're going to work together. They're generally not going to argue and fight with each other. Non-reproductive males and females tend to live the shorter lives, and they perform a variety of cooperative behaviors. That This includes digging new tunnels. They sweep debris out of the tunnels. They help groom the queen. And obviously, if there's any predators that come along, they all pitch in and help defend against the defend the colony against that. So the question is kind of weird is why would individuals yield exclusive reproduction to a single queen and a few males? Why would these same individuals then work for the colony? So the idea is it's it's almost like it's, it's almost like indentured servitude, um, almost like a form of slavery to an extent, kind of in a twisted way. But why would you give up your right to reproduce? Why, why were you, are you okay with this to say, okay, this one reproduces for the whole colony and I'll help raise their kids. I'm not going to reproduce myself. This is very non-human behavior for the most part. There's, there's some people that 
completely understand that. But for the most part, it's, it's against our nature as humans, at least, to understand. And the idea here is that this really goes into the genetics of the naked mole rats. Now, I doubt that the naked mole rats realize they're as genetically related as they are, but um, Hudson, Kern, Reeve, and his colleagues use DNA fingerprinting to compare bands of DNA in a colony. And without going into too much detail, the naked mole rats had an average relatedness of 0.81. Now, this is important to understand. This is statistics zero to one scale. So this is saying they're 81% related. To put this in perspective, unrelated individuals have a, are zero. They're 0% similar genes. Siblings, meaning that you got half your DNA from your mother, half your DNA from your father, and your brother or sister got the same thing, you have 50% or 0.5 relatedness. 50%. Naked mole rats are 81%. Identical twins have a score of 1.0 or 100% genetic similarity. So between the realm of brothers, brother and sister and identical twins, brothers or sisters in that case, naked mole rats actually tend more towards the identical twins part of that spectrum and less towards the brother and sister um, part of that, or siblings part of that segment. So it's thought that in part because of the high levels of inbreeding in the past and even till today, a lot of mating between co um, cousins, that it's just not in the evolutionary benefit of these naked mole rats to breed with each other because then you would have too many too much inbreeding and you would start to have genetic defects and so it's almost like there's something in the naked mole rats that realize we probably should not inbreed and so they only inbreed they only breed a little bit um, and then everybody else just kind of chips in and this kind of just shows various strains, natural strains, domesticated strains, and laboratory strains of relatedness between various animals to kind of give you an idea. So you can see this probably with horses and pigs, cats and dogs, a lot of inbreeding to get to these artificial selections, um, thanks to the humans. Inbred mice, you know, get pretty close up, but those are laboratory that are done there. I don't know what exactly the specific example is with Japanese quail. But the naked mole rats are green. They're a natural strain. And between colonies, only a little bit above 0.6, but between colony, but within a colony, 0.8 to 0.9. Very much, almost, almost like identical twins between themselves. And they don't compete with each other. They work altruistically to work with this. So very interesting fact about the naked mole rats.